By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a match for you between a Lion Dip deck and a Mono Black deck. And this is played in the Odal Finals, the online Dutch old school league. And these are the finals of May 2021. And the players that we're seeing here is David, who's on Mono Black, and Steinar, who's on Lion Dip. So this promises to be a really good match. So I'm really looking forward to bring this to you. Um, before we jump into the action itself, though, I'm first going to uh, discuss the decks with you. Now, if you want to skip that, I know some of you do, check the description below. And there you will uh, will find several timestamps. And one of those timestamps reads MTG Games. And click on there, that will take you straight to the games and here like always we're going to start with the deck deck and i'm first going to look at the deck of steinar lion dip and here we see steinar's deck so this is a lion dip right and this is a deck that is really gaining popularity and has gained popularity i should say for a while now winning some big events and it's no surprise to me that we find this one in the finals i think when you compare it with other top tier decks lion dip is easier to maneuver to control than um, one of the more like more sophisticated tier one decks, like for example, the deck. Um, so what are we looking at here? What is Steiner working with? Well, Lion Dip, let's start with that. That's the title of the deck, right? That's named after the Savannah Lions and the Surrender of Freak. Now, the great thing about these two creatures is, yes, they're cheap, and yes, you get a lot of bang for your buck, a lot of power on the battlefield. But another great thing is it's easy to play them and keep mana open to do other stuff. So as you can see, there are a lot of instants here, powerful instance and also interrupt. So he's got the counter magic, right? A double counter spell and a mana drain, but he also packs four lightning bolts, three swords, four disenchants, two psionic blasts. So this is just a great deck. Ancestral Recall, of course, is an instant as well, by the way, that's in here also. So he's got a lot of instants and interrupts that he can play. And the nice thing about these low casting cost creatures is you can play them out and you can keep your mana open to do another thing in your turn, but if it's an instant, also in the turn of your opponent. So you're extremely flexible when you're playing with this pile of cards. Obviously, it also contains the power, and power is great to get you back from behind. You know, uh, a time twister can get those lightning bolts back to finish the job. Uh, a time walk can get you back in the game. An ancestral recall can get you back in the game. And of course, another really powerful card that's not part of power nine, but to me, it kind of is balance. You know, that's another card, fantastic when you're from behind. And remember, balance doesn't count artifacts because we see all the moxin in this deck, we see the soul ring. So if all the, that jewelry is on board on the battlefield with your Lotus, you're safe to play out your blessing, uh, sorry, your balance because it doesn't count those artifacts in. So that's another thing to keep in the back of your mind. And of course we see the usual black splash, mind twist and demonic tutor um, that we see in most you know highly competitive decks. So. All in all, uh, not a deck that's uh, that's outspoken, you know, uh, but it is a very well-known deck and it's a tier one deck. And uh, yeah, I think this is definitely a contender. I actually think this is a favorite uh, in this matchup. And talking about favorites, let's take a look uh, at the deck of his opponent to kind of assess how much chance his opponent has against this violence. Let's take a look at the deck of David. And here we see the deck of David and it is mono black. And actually we don't see the deck, we see... Um, cards of his deck because unfortunately I don't have a deck photo but I do know what's in his deck so I've made a little selection to kind of give you an idea what his deck is all about. So it's mono black right and maybe when you're thinking about mono black you think about aggression. How you think about dark ritual, into hippie, uh, black knight, those cards are in here by the way but for example he is not playing bat moon, he's not playing stone throwing devils so his approach is more aggro with mid-range with control can you still follow me because the interesting thing about black is it has all three of these flavors and david has all packed them in one deck so you've got your underworld dreams right the card you see here at the front and underworld dreams is just great when you've got a control situation or when you have a lot of pressure on the board so if he can get hippies out black knights out if he's attacking away and then he puts the dreams on it's just tough for the opponent because you have to deal with the creature pressure and you have to deal with this enchantment that's hurting you. And then he's also playing with two Mazes of If main. So that's quite interesting. Maze of If is a card that's also very useful when you attack. For example, you have, let's say, a scenario where you have two 2-2 two, two flyers and your opponent has like that Surrender Perfit on the other side of the table. You can attack with both. And then the one that he decides to block, you can use your maze 
to take that uh, out of combat. And that means that you can hit with one Hypnotic Spectre and the other Hypnotic Spectre doesn't die. So Maze of If is very versatile and is much more than just a defensive card. In a lot of cases, and I think in this deck as well, it can also operate very well as an offensive card. And then the card after Maze of If, we see Nevenerals Disc. Now, I think it's great. He's playing with three Nevenerals Disc here. And I think that's good because the problem when you play Mono is it's hard to deal with certain threats. And when you're playing Mono Black, it means it's hard to deal with artifacts. It's hard to deal with enchantments. Nevenerals Disc will help you get rid of both. Right, so Nevenerals Disc is great. And what I also like is he hasn't built his deck around Nevenerals Disc. No, Nevenerals Disc is something in the deck. It's just a great reset button when you're behind and that is how he's using it. It's also a great uh, reset button when you're playing against these combo enchantment artifact decks. So overall, I can really understand the decision and I think it's a good decision. And then as a four drop, of course, we have the mighty Juzam Jin. You know, that's the creature that personally, I love to see on the battlefield, but Suchi is a great alternative and in some circumstances maybe even better. Of course he's only a 4-4 for 4, but remember the format we're playing here is Swedish. You don't play with mana burn and at least the Suchi doesn't hurt you, which could be beneficial if you're kind of having this grindy match with your Underworld Dreams and maybe a maze on the board and a Suchi to block and then you kind of want to grind it out as long as possible and let the Underworld Dreams do the work. And then a Juzum can kind of be a little bit too much because a Juzum is good when you're attacking. It's not so good when it's on blocking duty. And then another card that kind of drags this deck together with the Suchi more into a mid-range deck, it's this Sangir Vampire. So it's playing with a couple of these beauties, main board, 4-4 Flyer, I love them. And I, what I hope for in the finals, it's probably not going to happen, but that the Sangir can gobble up a creature and actually get one of those plus one, plus one counters. I always love that. Unfortunately, there's no Nettling Imp in this deck, but that would have been sweet. And then uh, we've got the Hippie, we already discussed it, and then the Dark Ritual. I think one of the reasons why I think Mono Black is not the favorite in this matchup is card draw. I think drawing cards with this deck is going to be really tough. I looked at the list. He is playing with one Greed, so that can give him some cards, but that's about it. He's not playing with a Jam Day Tome, for example. He's not playing with a Jaloom Tome, so that's going to be a little bit rough, but we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen. I do think that in terms of, um, you know, this deck for a Mono deck, it's very diverse. Like I said, it has the three flavors of aggro, mid-range, and control elements. And also it's probably gonna be very consistent because that's what mono, black, uh, mono decks in general usually are. So, um, okay, before we continue to the games, maybe it's fun if you let me know in the comments below who is your favorite, who do you think is gonna win this, line dip or mono black? Did you fill it in? Okay, then we're gonna continue to the games. Game number one, and here we go. Steiner on the left, David on the right. He's on the play, starting with a Soul Ring. So David is the mono black player, and Steiner on the left, a Lion Dip player. So a good start, I guess, with the Soul Ring. Possibly next turn, a Suchi from David. Who knows? Let's see what Steiner can do as an answer. I guess he's a little bit in the tank. Okay, there we go. There's a Library of Alexandria, so that's pretty good. Probably gonna draw a card and possibly, okay, playing a Mox Pearl. That's an interesting choice. That means he can no longer activate his Library of Alexandria or I'm missing something. Okay, he's taking it back, I guess, and then passing turn. That's kind of nice of David that he's allowing that. And there is a Swamp. And there is the Suchi. And Steiner now end step activating his Loa and untapping here. There he goes, drawing into cart number nine. Possibly gonna play out the Loa and the land and then he's uh, he's back into active library territory again. Playing a City of Brass. Eight cards in hand. It's nice to see City and Library of Alexandria next to each other, by the way. That's pretty sweet. Beautiful cards, both of them. And there's that Mox Pearl. I wonder what he's going to do. Tapping the City of Brass, going to go down to 19. Oh, look at that, Surrendip Afrit. So choosing to cast a Surrendip rather than uh, keep his Loa active. Interesting choice. Also because the Surrendip, of course, cannot really block the uh, Suchi. Well, unless he wants to chum block. He's not doing that, of course. He's taking the damage, going down to 15. And there's a Sengir Vampire. So that Soul Ring has really helped David to ramp into his bigger creatures. And there's a lot of pressure from his side. And now Steiner needs to draw 
some of the solutions in the deck. Remem remember, he's playing Swords to Plows here, as he's playing Disenchant, so there should be enough in the deck, taking a damage from his own Serendip, dropping to 14, going to draw in card number 7, I believe, so he can possibly activate the Loa again. I am expecting some kind of removal here. There's a Volcanic Island. And we see a tap here for a Disenchant on the Suchi. Remember, there's no mana burn, so no 4 damage for David here. But the Suchi is gone. And if he has a Swords now, he's kind of back into this game. He can just take care of the uh, Sengir and attack for 3 or possibly keep it as a blocker for the Factory. Doesn't seem to have a Swords, or maybe he wants to play it in the uh, turn of David. We'll see. Attacking now with the Sengir. He's on 14. Is he going to drop to 10? Or are we going to see... Oh, there's going to be, oh, there's a bolt and a block. Okay, so that's a two for one. Not too bad if you're David here. I don't think you really regret it. I think a Swords would have been a way bigger problem. And tapping for again a Suchi. David is really putting on the pressure here. This is going to be difficult for Steinar. He really needs to find some more removal. I mean, he's on 14, which is still pretty high. Let's see what he can do. Playing a Tundra. And Tappy Tappy taking a damage from his own city. Going to 13. Tapping 5. Will we see a Sarah Angel? Yeah, there she is. Sarah Angel. Beautiful creature. And uh, I'm sure David is willing to trade the Sarah for the Suchi. So I'm expecting him to swing in here. That's exactly what he does. Probably going to trade. Doesn't want to go to 9, I think. Or does he? Depends on what's in his hand, of course. Let's see what Steinar is going to do here. And yeah, he's going to trade. Makes absolute sense. The problem, of course, for Steinar is also that David has two of those Mishra's factories that he can start that he can start using the moment that Steinar doesn't have a blocker. And look at this. Well played by David that Hypnotic Spectre second main. And again, Steiner is under pressure. Two factories and a hippie against him. He needs to play another Sarah, preferably, or at least something to block, perhaps even a Surrendip. And removal is still key here. Okay, there's a bolt on the Hypnotic Spectre. It's always great when you play four bolts and, uh, and some swords. That gives you a lot of uh, removal power. And tapping three again, there we see a Surrendip. And I think that Surrendip is important because remember, David is two Mishra's factories, right? So you don't want to let him swing in with those. That means four damage. There's an Underworld Dreams. Ooh, and that's going to tick up. Can he counter this? I believe he can. Look at that. Tapping two. There's a Counterspell. This Counterspell is super important by, uh, by Steinar. This is well played. He really needed this Counterspell because having a damage from the Underworld Dreams and the Surrendip, I mean, then is going really, really fast. And remember, it's hard for Steiner to attack here because then he's opening himself up to those double factories. Let's see what he can do. He's been under pressure most of this turn. There's another Surrendip. This kind of opens up the field for him. Now he can attack with one of them and inflicting some damage on the life total of David. And David there tapping two black for, okay, a black knight. Not very impressive. That maze actually is. That maze is going to be helpful. So he's going to untap, take two damage, drop to nine. But of course he can start attacking. And the nice thing here for Steiner is that he can just attack with both Surrendums because one of them will be tapped, untapped anyway because of that maze. Or, now that I'm saying this, or David says, you know what, deal three damage extra and I'll swing in. So this actually kind of a... A difficult scenario for Steiner deciding what to do here. I mean, you don't want to just sit back with your Surrendips and take two damage a turn, but if you decide to swing in with both and David doesn't activate the mace and just takes the six, he can swing back for six. Look at this, he's attacking. And of course, David doesn't know what Steiner has in hand, neither do I, so maybe he's going to play another creature second main or play a removal spell. And you can see David now thinking, should I take the damage or shouldn't I take the damage? And he decides to send one back and he's going to go to 14. It's an understandable decision, but 
maybe if he'd taken the risk to, to go to three extra, he could have attacked now full force. But then again, you don't know what your opponent has, of course. Now he has some more information because Steiner didn't play anything out. Another option, of course, here for David is to just attack with everything and take one back with the mace. That's another option. And I think that's what he's going for. Yeah, I think that's what he's going to do. Attacking for six here, then the, then the one that's going to be blocked, he's going to take that back, take that creature back with the mace, back to safety. Let's see what's going to happen. Let's see if I'm correct about this scenario. So he's blocking. It's hard now to tell which one he's going to block. I assume he's actually perhaps blocking the Black Knight. If he blocks the maze, then David can respond by untapping uh, sorry, a factory, then David can respond by untapping the factory with a maze and using that maze to pump. So he's blocking a factory. If David plays this right, he can use the maze to untap that factory that he's blocking, using that to pump the other factory, deal five damage. Let's see what he's going to do. And I think every point of damage matters here because Steiner is on... Yeah, that's exactly what he's going to do. Steiner's on nine, so he's going to drop to four. Ho ho! This is quite a play by David, and now he's going to drop to two. Oh man, Steiner needs a miracle. He needs to get rid of his own surrender per here. Of course, he can go for six, which feels good. I mean, that would bring David on eight, but then he really needs to at least sorts one of his creatures. I mean, he is on two. It's deadly. He has to do something. Can he do something, or is this the first game in the pocket for David? And that would be quite an accomplishment, considering Steiner has had a Library of Alexandria since turn one. Let's see, what can he do? Doubting, should I attack, shouldn't I attack? The ideal scenario, I guess, here perhaps for Steiner is if he has a Swords and he could consider attacking with one, bring him on 11. And then he can sort his own going to... Ah, it's going to be it's too tight. It's too tight. Passing turn here. So perhaps he's got a sort. If you're David, you just don't really have to do anything, do you? You can just sit back and enjoy the ride. Let's see what he's going to do. He's on two. He's going to be killed by his own surrenders, you know? I think if I was David, I would just pass in this scenario and just see what what Steiner is going to do because if you go all out attack and he has that uh, that swords it could still be annoying yeah there we see a swords I think yeah swords on his own surrender so he's going to go to five then he's going to take a damage go back to four so he's going to untap so he does it at the end step so he does need to take a damage from his surrender though yeah, exactly. So he's going to go to four. And next turn, David can attack with three creatures here. That should be enough. But of course, we don't know if Steiner has any more removal. There's Chaos Orb. Interesting. Do you really want to flip on the Surrendip? I guess that's what he's going to do. So will we see, okay, there we see a sword. So he's going to go to seven. And if you're David, you're not really unhappy with this scenario because now you can swing in for six. And the only bad thing about this is, is that Steiner is still alive. And I have to give credits to Steiner for sticking in this game, using his sword to the best of his ability. Will we see something else happening here? He's swinging in for six, but he's tapping. Oh, psionic blast. Killing probably one of the factories, right? Although then he can do that trick again. So he's killing the Black Knight instead because he knows now that David can use the maze to untap a Mishra in response and pumping it up. So he doesn't want that to happen. And look at the life total of Steiner. He's on one, no cards in hand. <laughs> he's, he's showing it as well. I mean, this is game, right? This is game plateau. So game one here for David, the mono black player. And I am quite surprised, to be honest, after seeing that Loa hit in the opening uh, turn of Steiner, I really thought that he was the favorite. But well done, David. Lots of pressure from that mono black deck. Really a strong deck. We're going to let these players sideboard and we'll catch back up to them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So it's one up for David. So I'm assuming Steiner is going to go into play. It looks like he's taking a mulligan there. 
That is not ideal for Steiner. He has to win this one, of course. Starting with the Tundra. Swamp for David. Luckily for Steiner, not a ritual into a hippie. Although maybe he has a bolt or a swords in hand. So that's not really a huge problem, I guess. Anyways, playing a volcanic passing. There we see a sinkhole by David. We didn't see a single sinkhole in that first game. And now there is one already here. Okay, mana drain. Good move. And that counter magic is really helping Steiner. We saw that in game one with that Underworld Dreams. And now he's doing a well-timed counter spell again. Playing a Mishra's Factory and a Suchi because he has, of course, the mana drain um, mana. So he has two extra from that sinkhole. There we see a strip mine. Interestingly enough, he's taking care of that factory. And I guess that makes sense because of the Black Knight, but it must have been tempting for him as well to take care of one of the two dual lands and kind of deny um, Steiner possibly access to one of the colors. Swing in with the Suchi, David dropping to 16. So now we see pressure from Steiner. And in game one, uh, the tables were turned where we saw pressure from the mono black player. Here we see a sideboard card, Gloom. And that means that all the white cards from Steiner are going to be taxed. He has to pay three extra mana for them, so four to play his Swords to Plows here, which he now actually can. He's got enough mana, but he doesn't have enough mana yet to cast, for example, a Disenchant. There we see an attack by Steinar, so dropping David here now to, uh, to 12, I believe. So that is going not too bad for Steinar, and there is a Brain Geyser drawing two extra. Kind of refilling his hand here, passing turn. Does mean that he's opening up towards some damage from David. And David is not attacking. Interesting. I would have thought he would have attacked. Possibly he's thinking about double blocking that Black Knight and the factory on the Suchi. And I wonder if Steiner is going to attack. Maybe when you're Steiner you can think, you know what, I can trade a Suchi for a Black Knight, which is fine because Black Knight is pretty annoying against my deck. Then again, he's got Surrender, so actually it's not that big of a deal. He's got Bolts. There we do see an attempt for a double block. David can use his Mishra's Factory to bump itself. So that means a 3-3 and a 2-2 go together to a 4-4. Are we going to see a Bolt here? A Bolt would be perfect for Steiner. There is the Bolt on the Knight. And that means that David loses both of his creatures. It was a risky play and it's not being rewarded here in this case. And there is a Chaos Orb. Wow. I mean, Steiner is really showing his muscles in this second game. This is going to be really, really tough for David to get back from. I mean, he's not dead yet. He's still on 12. I'm not saying he's lost already, but it's going to be really tricky. Tapping four, playing, ooh, playing a Mind Twist. That's actually a great way to kind of get back into this. And then he needs to kind of deal with the Suchi on the ground, and he's kind of back into it. And there we see the cards gone out of the hand of Steiner, and that's also going to make it almost impossible for him to get that Loa active in this particular game. Attacking for four, David going to drop to eight. And when you're David, you really need to take care of that Suchi. Another Swamp, perhaps. Thank your Vampire 4-4, four, four, he could trade. Ooh, it doesn't look like it. Passing turn here. It's going to drop to four. This is difficult for David. Now he needs to find something. That said, wow, this was a very, very quick game. Number two kind of felt that David couldn't find the right cards. And, you know, Steiner, you really showed your muscles and the full power of your deck. Line Dip is just incredibly, uh, incredibly versatile and powerful when it's working like this. All cylinders go for Steiner. So this was game number two. That means it's a 1-1. One -one. And we're going to go to game number three. Game number three, the decider 1-1. One, one. David on the play, which makes him a slight favorite because his mono black is very quick. Again, not starting off with a swamp. That's so interesting. Just because you've got your black knight, you, you know, you've got your hippie. Then again, starting with your factory does mean that next turn you can start swinging in. Although Steiner, of course, having a deck with bolts and swords. Anyway, we'll see. Maybe he just didn't have another, another choice. Uh, there we see a City of Brass with a Mock Sapphire by Steiner. So that means that he can start countering already in the first turn. That's not something nice for it when you're David. And attacking here is so a very aggressive. And there's the Bolt. Does mean a damage for Steiner going down to 19. And I always kind of, I don't know if it's, if it's the right decision to make to be so aggressive with your factory early game. Because now you're basically a land drop behind. There we see an Urborg. Then again, David knows his deck best, and um, he's probably also seeing that Steiner has 
more powerful cards if the game takes longer. So he probably just wants to finish it as quickly as he can. Let's see if he has possibly a Black Knight to play after the Urborg. Doesn't look like it. Passing turn to Steinar. Let's see what Steinar can do. Possibly play out a Surrender Perfeet, for example. Playing out the Loa again. Wow, we've seen the Library of Alexandria a lot. The question, of course, is can he use it? I think it's pretty low on cards already. So he's probably not going to make much use of it in this game as well. Tapping two, there is a Time Walk. That is good news. And I'm actually expecting him to activate the factory exactly, taking a damage swinging in for two here. And that means that David's going to drop to 18 and is going to take turn against Steiner from his Time Walk. And uh, these power cards really make magic an easy game. There is a Suchi and passing turn. What can David do here? Suchi is not his best friend. Okay, he's got that mind twist again. Again, twisting here. And he's losing two Suchis. Look at that. Wow, so this was a very important mind twist for David, but he's still pretty behind here because Steiner can now swing in for six. And then I believe he's going to drop to 12. So he's on 12 life. And again, Steiner, you're under pressure. The question is, can he find answers in his mono black deck? Paralyzed probably on the Suchi, at least that's something, but he can simply pay for to untap the Suchi. But then, of course, he doesn't have enough land anymore to also activate the factory. So it is doing something. I think if you're David, you were really hoping for a Nevernorl's disc here. And then, of course, hoping that Steiner doesn't have a disenchant or a counterspell. And I wonder what the players are talking about right now at the moment. If they're discussing if Steiner can counter this or if he can do something against it. So playing it on the Suchi and also playing a sinkhole on the factory... And now we see that Counterspell Mana Drain. So there is a damage. And this is actually double bad. This is much worse than a normal Counterspell. Because now Steiner gets two colorless mana that he can use to activate the Mishra's Factory. So he can simply untap in his upkeep. Pay for to untap the Suchi here. Oh, he's going to do it this way. Interesting. Maybe he has something else in hand that he wants to play, although I think his hand is empty. I think my line of play would have been using the City of Brass to untap Suchi, keeping Factory alive, and using that mana to cast, although he has a Surrender now. Okay, he's got a Copy Artifact. That kind of makes sense here. So copying the Suchi probably, attacking for four. Four life left for David. Oh, man, this is going to be tough. This is, and again, a very one-sided Game 3. It seems at least David needs a miracle, and I don't think he has a miracle in his deck. He's got a disc, but it takes him an entire turn. Showing his hand, saying, man, you've got this one. There's nothing I can do. And that's it. Congratulations, Steiner. You've won the Raging Bull Finals. You've won the Raging Bull Monthly of May 2021. And here we see the deck of Steiner. So the Lion Deb deck. And if you're interested in this type of magic, if you want to join an online tournament, you can join a tournament like this because it's free to join. There's a monthly every month, hence the name monthly. So, um, and it's easy to join. These guys are very laid back. It's organized by Hank, uh, also known as HW underscore MTG on Instagram. And I'll put all the um, contact details. I'll put them all in the description below. So if you're interested in joining the Odo, uh, you can, and it's free as well, so it's, it only has perks. So if you enjoy playing Old School Magic, um, take a look on their Facebook page. Maybe it's something for you, and uh, and you can sign up. And, uh, well, that's it for today. That's the episode for today. Thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk Old School Magic. And if you want to support the channel, if you want to help Timmy Talks grow, you can do a few very simple things, a few things that are free as well. First one is like the video. Liking it really helps. Another one is subscribing to the channel if you're not a subscriber yet. And a third thing that you can do is uh, you can actually leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this matchup. Let me know who was your favorite in this matchup. Were you also thinking that Line Dip would win this one? 
or were you rooting for mono black? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And again, leaving a comment also helps the channel grow and show on YouTube that you appreciate the content that I make. Then there's one last thing that you can also do. You can become a patron of Timmy Talks and then you can sponsor the show financially. Join the Timmy Talks Discord, join Timmy Talks tournaments, get a kick-ass Timmy Talks pin and get your name in the end scroll. What? Yeah, and all that starts at one dollar a month so if you've got something to spare and you enjoy this content and you want to help me keep this channel afloat check out the timmy talks patreon page click on the info card that you see right now and have a look at the patreon page that being said let's now take a look at the amazing the fantastic and scroll with all the great channel members and patrons of timmy talks here we go what shall we do with the drunken Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazink!